you have already been introduced to different line styles in previous videos. The lines that we will use when dimensioning, to name a few, are extension lines, dimension lines, and leader lines. In addition to proper line usage, there are some basic rules of dimensioning that we have to become familiar with so that dimensions are easy to find and easy to read. For instance, the font must be a specific style and size, and arrowheads must be sized relative to the font. Dimension lines are lines drawn with a dimension and terminate in an arrowhead when touching an extension line. It is not good practice to place a dimension on an object. This can make the object hard to see and interpret. Instead, dimension lines are placed somewhere off the object and easy to read. When dimensioning linear surfaces, dimension lines are drawn parallel to the feature being considered. Even though dimension lines are drawn parallel to the surface being measured, the dimension itself is written horizontally along with all other dimensions on the print, or in some cases is written vertically along with all other dimensions on the print. When there is not enough space to insert a dimension between dimension lines, the dimension line may be placed outside the extension line. The dimension can also be placed outside the extension line if the space between the extension lines is limited. In space-restricted areas, it is common to see arrowheads replaced by circular dots. These dots are understood to be the other side of a dimension line and its arrowhead. These dots can be used in sequence as well. As demonstrated in this illustration on the right, the dimension should be centered on the dimension line. It is bad practice to place a dimension more to one side or the other side of the dimension line. And although the dimension is expected to be on center to the dimension lines, we can, in some instances, run into difficulty when dimensions are stacked, like in the illustration on the left. To avoid this type of confusion when it comes to dimensioning, dimensions may be slid along the dimension line closer to one of the arrowheads. Extension lines extend from a feature. If we wanted to know the distance from this point to this point, then extension lines are drawn extending from that feature as if the surface we are measuring were lengthened, but leaving a small gap of about 60 thousandths of an inch, that's 0 0.06 inches or 1.5 millimeters, between the extension line and the feature, as you can see here. Extension lines always continue in line with the surface that they are dimensioning. In situations where extension lines cross arrowheads or dimension lines, a small break in the extension line is permitted. Unless tighter tolerances must be met on a print, it is common practice to create prints with two decimal place accuracy. All dimensions must be written with two decimal places of accuracy, even if the tenths and hundredths column are zeros. Due to the existence of fractional cutting tools that are currently being made and used in industry, we need to be aware of this particular type of dimensioning on prints, the fractional inch system. In this system, sizes are expressed in common fractions, the smallest division being 64 fourths. Sizes other than common fractions are expressed as decimals. Whole numbers do not require a decimal place. Besides the half and quarter fractions that are commonly seen on prints, the other common fractions that you will see on this type of print are eighths, sixteenths, thirty seconds, and sixty fourths. 
The metric units typically used on engineering drawings are the millimeter. Just like in the inch unit measuring system, the numerals to the right of the decimal indicate the degree of precision. Whole numbers do not require a zero after the decimal in the metric system. These rules and guiding principles are a starting point for understanding how to use and interpret dimensions on an engineered drawing.